Teams will always qualify and compete in our competitions on merit, not a closed shop run by a greedy select few. That was our decision from the beginning. And any club and its fans should still have the dream of participating in the Champions League based on their results on the pitch. But before we bring you all the details, I must address the extraordinary situation that has developed on the eve of this announcement and during the night. I cannot stress more strongly at this moment UEFA and the footballing world stand united against the disgraceful, self-serving proposal we have seen in the last 24 hours from a select few clubs in Europe that are fueled purely by greed above all else. And not only football world was uni is united, all the society is united, governments are united. It's pa part of our culture. We are all united ab ab against this uh, nonsense of a project. We have the English FA, Spanish Federation, Italian Federation, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, but also FIFA, all our 55 member associations, unanimous in our opposition to these cynical plans that are completely against what football should be. Our game has become the greatest sport in the world based on open competition, integrity and sporting merit. And we cannot allow and we will not allow that to change, never. Ever. As previous, uh, previously announced by FIFA and the six confederations, the players who will play in the teams that uh, might uh, play in, uh, in, a, in the closed league will be banned on playing the World Cup and Euro. So they will not be able to represent their national teams at any matches. So. We urge everyone, from the millions of football lovers around the world, the world's media gathered in this call today, politicians and football's governing bodies, to stand tall with us as we do everything in our power to ensure it, this never ends up in fruition. I wholeheartedly believe, we all do, that the changes we will announce now are exactly the required next step in European football's evolution. They are exciting and their heart retain the values of the game that we all love. We'll also be introducing a new support structure built on a revised financial model that boosts revenues for participants and importantly, sees solidarity payments increase as well, driving a positive impact across the European game right down to the grassroots. And I want to emphasize today what many of the fans don't know. UEFA distributes close to 90% of all the revenues back to the game, not to the professionals only. We finance youth, we finance grassroots, we, we finance women's football, we, find, we have a foundation, children's foundation, that, that is a, has a great charity project. So whoever thinks Super League is about money and UEFA is about money as well. It's not right. Super League is only about money. Money of the dozen. I don't want to call them dirty dozen. But UEFA is about developing football. And it's about financing what should be financed that our football, our culture survives. And some people don't understand it. The reforms preserve the value of importance of the domestic game by retaining the principle that domestic performance should be the key to qualification. This should and will not ever change. The European game is the greatest success story of modern sport. And that's a, it's a reason why. Because of the pyramid, because of its long history. We are constantly adopting the European competition to ensure it's more and more interesting. 
more and more modern. But the principles cannot change. And solidarity is something that stays forever. But for some people, solidarity doesn't exist. Unity doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is their pockets. Ultimately, we believe that these changes and the support structure we are implementing reflect what our sport is all about. The new former preserves open competition in Europe. It recognizes all values, the importance of domestic football. And crucially, the words leading elite club competitions remain a driving force that supports the entire structure, as I said, of European football. I would like to thank all the football family, meaning players, fans, coaches, national associations, leagues, and clubs except the 12. I would like to thank governments all around Europe. I would like to especially thank Prime Minister Johnson, President Macron, uh, Vice President of European Commission, Mr. Skinas, President of European Parliament, Sassoli, and all the other leaders around Europe who respect our fans, who respect our culture, who respect the values that are European values, not only football values. And by my opinion, this idea is a, a spit in the face of all football lovers and our society as well. So we will not allow them to take it away from us.